So you recently wrote a piece that I recommend to everybody, and if you can, give me the citation, but the case against vaccinating children, I'm probably butchering the title, oh. but, but, but tell me what that article was and, and, and make the case, maybe the, the case is against mandating that children yeah. get vaccinated. So I actually wrote two. One was in Tablet and one was in the Wall Street Journal. I, they're, they're similar, but the Tablet one's a lot longer. Um, well, so the case against vaccinate, forcing children to be vaccinated, and I, I say forced. I mean, so the other side, the people in favor of mandates are always saying, and, and frankly, a lot of the judges, you're not being forced. You know, we're not tying you to a bed and forcing you to get a vaccine. We're just making your job contingent upon it. Or in the case of all of these cities that are mandating vaccination in order to go into a restaurant or a movie theater, you know, your participation in public life, essentially. So I actually think the same arguments apply to adults. It's just sort of writ large with children because um, there, you know, there have been far fewer studies conducted of the health effects on children and children face such a low risk of COVID that it's clear that they're just sort of being used in order to protect adults, although it doesn't even work because, you know, first of all, we know the vaccine doesn't stop transmission that much yeah. at this point, et cetera, et cetera. But it's more like assuaging adults or rational fear, really. Um, so, I mean, because children face such a low risk from COVID, it's highly unethical uh, to mandate vaccination for them and to, you know, uh, New York City now, kids as young as five have to show proof of vaccination to go into a restaurant. It's crazy. Or a movie theater, participate in um, sports with their peers. So you're so parents are put in this horrible position of having to uh, decide between what they think is in their kids' best interest health-wise and forcing them to be essentially excommunicated from society. Uh, what happen? I mean, what happens? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, cities are mandating vaccines for kids to go back to school. Yeah. is Give me an example of that. And, and what happens if you as a parent say, no, I'm not going to do that? I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I hope that there are a lot of lawsuits, especially against public schools. It's much easier with public schools because it's essentially the government. So you can make constitutional arguments. Um, a lot of these, you know, arguments really haven't been tested because we've never faced anything like this, you know. And, and in my cases, the government the other side, the government is always saying things like, well, we've always required school children to get vaccines. Yeah, but, you know, those are for, for diseases that pose a risk, a significant risk to children. For vaccines that have been tested for decades, um, this vaccine has, has been tested a much shorter period of time. Uh, so these are really, it's really not the same thing, not to mention the fact that typically, you know, you get one, you don't get the MMR vaccine every six months. Yeah. Uh, so this is, it's a really different circumstance. We've also, I guess we've changed the definition of vaccine to accommodate this vaccine. Yeah. Even though like vaccines typically are a solution. Right. Like one and done. Boom. It's 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 a done thing, but obviously at this point, that's that's why the logic of all this is so confusing because um, forcing kids to get vaccinated doesn't appear at this point to provide any protection for the teachers that seem so afraid of the students, does it? No, no, and again, because the vaccine isn't sterilizing and doesn't appear to be that good at stopping transmission, it's unclear if it ever was, but now with the emergence of new variants, it appears even less so.